This is Big Johnny with American Sports Media Radio. We've got Gray Hair Gaming, U.S. Men's National Team coach, on the line as he prepares his team for the World Cup for the first time in eight years. What are your thoughts on squad selection coming into the World Cup as it seems you've gone with some familiar faces and some unfamiliar ones for this competition? Yeah, it is. It's a, it's an eclectic group, you know. Uh, some of them come from near and, and some of them come from far. Uh, we've had a pretty solid group leading up to uh, the World Cup, but you might see some new faces um, as we just were trying to put our best options out on the pitch. And that means there's going to be some people that have missed out, and that's unfortunate. But that's part of the job. We make tough decisions. Let's do America proud. Hello, my friends. Welcome back in. The World Cup draw is here. It's still about five or six months from now. No, six or seven months from now. I'm trying to vacation to get us there. Um, yeah, yeah. Let's let's do the draw. Shall we? I'm just going to draw the, um, we are in the, the second pot. We've gone up a lot in, uh, ranking. All right. Is Poland the one to beat? 27th. Qatar. Russia. I'm thinking that's a group we can do something with. We are somehow, my friends, 14th in the world. I will briefly catch you up. Um... Drew with Costa Rica, 2-2. Two to two. Tyler Adams, Jordan Zabachu with the goals. They came back. It didn't really matter. We beat Mexico, which was kind of nice, not going to lie. We called up uh, Jesus Ang uh, Angulo um, who, to play left back. Nope. Nope. That's what they did. It was an own goal. That's right. We have another guy that's similarly named. That's what threw me off there. So an own goal. And then Tim Way scored um, on a 7.1. We played yeah, all right. Morocco, 3-2. to two. Nothing really to report there. They had a man sent off. We scored right after. So it was nice to kind of capitalize on that. Count Acosta playing well. Oh, my friends. Has a damaged spine. Sorry for the sp in your ears, but a damaged spine. He's been out for like four to six months. He's He had been on fire for us. Uh, from a from a form standpoint, yeah, uh, he had been okay. So he had the one game he was really good. The rest of the time he was six point six. Maybe he wasn't on fire, but before that, you know, he wasn't terrible. Before that, damaged spine. I felt terrible for him. Um, Slovakia and Matko Miljevic, yeah, with a penalty, a quite nicely taken one. I would add, not down the middle. Uh, we beat Peru 2-0, and then we drew with Paraguay, which was kind of gutting because yet again, a penalty. They scored two late goals, one an own goal. It bounced off the post, hit, you know, whatever. Stefan went in. It counts as an own goal. Uh, but then they get a penalty to to squeak it by. Switzerland, I, I set up away friendlies to try and get us used to playing away. Starting with Switzerland, moving to Turkey, getting to warmer climates, Um since the location of the of the World Cup is in the Middle East. Um, and we go up early with a penalty. Another lovely finish penalty by Keaton Marks. If you'll notice, I've 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 gone with the, the face pack. The DF-11 uh, face pack and skin. I do like it a whole bunch. Um, and then they scored, and we came back and scored in the 86th minute. And you're like, okay, 86th minute. Off we go. Now... We were rotating because we had players that could only go 45 minutes in each game and whatever. And then Shakiri scores a goal and it's kind of like, eh. And then like we completely fell apart and two minutes later they scored again. I don't really care. I care that we learn something from it. If that's a thing deep within the match engine of full manager, I'll be impressed. But if we can learn something from that result to be like, guys, we had the game won in the 86th minute and you gave it up. Um, then with Turkey, we had an out door equalizer late in the game and the only reason Altador is there to be honest with you is because Josh Sargent was injured Altador is doing all right in MLS he's a one every two kind of guy you know maybe he's got that lack of leadership we don't 
do we bring him to the World Cup? Well, you've seen the intro by now, so you would know, I guess. But mm, I set up friendly leagues with Wales and England again, trying to take on better competition. You know, it, traditionally, I've like I've played slightly less good competition. Um, but for this, I was like, you know what? Let's let's step our game up and see what how our system works against better competition. So we've got Wales, who are thirty first, England, who are eighth, Australia, forty six. I figured right before the World Cup, you want to like you know ease into that. Austria twentieth to try and help us. Now those are all home games. I didn't think about that. We probably should have done some away games there to kind of get used to the climate and all that kind of stuff. I may change that. Um, but that's where we're at, my friends. And uh, let me know what you. What, Okay, the, I love that when that happens, you have to like click four before the, the stuff shows up on the screen. What do you think about the groups? First off, I thought groups were going to be three-team groups. But maybe that's 2026. Maybe I'm thinking of 2026. But I think when you look at this, we are somehow the top-ranked team. If we can draw Poland and beat the other two... We should be sitting pretty, right? Like, just get through the next round. The fact that the that we're there is amazing. My friends, that is where we're at right now. So now I have to go hop us forward. Our first game is going to... Oh, we'll no, okay, we take Russia on first. This becomes the must-watch game, my friends. So Austria, seven days before Russia. Okay, so we got a week to recuperate and all that kind of stuff. Five days before there. That's what we're going to do next. That's what we're going to do next. Let me know your thoughts on that. I did want to take us back in time to the 1st of January because, my friends, overall best 11, Matko Miljevic makes the overall best 11, which at this point in time, he has six caps and three goals. That is a low bar, my friends. We're not talking about for the season. This is the overall best 11. Six appearances, three goals on a 7.07. That seems like a really low bar to me. I'm just saying. Maybe it's because we're now playing the 4-3-3. Maybe. It just seems like a low bar. Hey, mate, you got here. You played six games. You're the best defensive midfielder we've ever seen. You, you, U.S. soccer might call him up, you know, in real life. They might at least try. Maybe they have. I don't know. Uh, we got Altidore, Christian Pulisic, Tim Weah, Adams, Acosta in the middle. McKinney not taking a spot yet. Uh, Scally on the right back. Miazga, Brooks, and Robinson, and Stefan, my friends. And then the best 11 for the season, is my understanding, is essentially the same thing, except you get Sargent and Jordan Saibachu here. Uh, I guess Miazga and Trusty versus Miazga and Brooks, because Brooks has not been playing as part of our squad. So that's what we got going on there. So let me know, my friends. We're going to end it there um, because I still have a long way to go to get us to actually to the World Cup. Let me know what you think of the intro. Like, a, like if you've been watching my uh, Rajan Rabon uh, series, which if you haven't, I highly recommend. It's got tons of views and likes, so it must be good. At least decent, right? Um, I'm trying to put a little bit more effort into my introductions. That may mean I'm spacing episodes out a little bit more, but hopefully it makes it worth it. So let me just think about that. I thought it was an interesting way to kind of announce what we were doing. All right, my friends, here we go. Taking on Russia. I, I am aware that we are facing the hosts, but the hosts are 72nd of the world. So Russia, 36th, Poland, 23rd. I'm amazed that we're 13th. Let's let's be let's be honest. Um, as I mentioned in the intro, this is our squad. We're going with Zach Steffen, Ethan Horvath, Nicholas Hansen gets called up because we had a Norwegian slash American goalkeeper who we called up to uh, the friendlies leading up to the World Cup, and then at the last minute, I'm I'm assuming Norway called and was like, "Hey, you want to come be our full, like our starting keeper?" Actually, actually, we're gonna go check that. Because he was going to be our third string, which, fair, right? If you want to go be the starter, no. Not even in the squad. you got to be freaking kidding me. Not even in the squad! Oh, my goodness. That's just... <laughs> Unbelievable. Unbelievable. All right. I guess he just didn't feel like going 
maybe, maybe he has an issue. I don't know. Zach Steffen, my friends, is with Sheffield United playing well. 7-1-5 coming into the tournament. 19 starts, 12 conceded, 10 clean sheets. Doing well. Four and a half star. Um, Horvath, doing all right. Playing at MLS with Portland. He moved there after uh, a stint with Club Bruges on a 6-9-9. Not as good, but like, you know, can do a job if we need to. And then Nicholas Hansen is really one for the future. And it was like, I could bring Sean Johnson, who's 32, not in form, is on like a 6.7. Um, but he's not going to be around for the next World Cup. Or I can bring this guy in, maybe like signal boost him a little bit to get him a move somewhere. Um, those are our keepers. Joe Scally has moved or is going to move on a free. This is unbelievable to me. So in real life, as we've discussed before, NYCFC has sold him to Bruce Mitch and Gladbach. That was that happened after I started the save. So obviously the database does not reflect that. Um, he was traded to Philadelphia where he's con continued to do okay. And then he's moving on a free. They let a 400,000 Euro player go on a free to Strasbourg in League 1. So he is going to be our starting right back. Backing him up, we have a, a surprise, Josh Emmanuel. And if, yes, I have changed the to the DF11. I think I mentioned that already, but if I didn't. Um, Josh is not as good. Um, enjoys a big match. He's decent, though. And what I like about him is he knows the things up and down the right wing. Right? And in a bind, he could play center back. So he's playing in MLS, he's in form, playing for Montreal, 7K a week. You know, not I'm not saying he's a bad player, right? Like, comes from Fleetwood. Yeah. Moved on a free to, mm, wah, 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 to Bolton. Um, and is an Ipswich product, apparently. So I guess he, he has selected us over both Nigeria and England. Um, we had some injuries to deal with. Justin Glad wasn't playing as well. And it's kind of like it was between he and Justin Glad and he's in form. Miazga Brooks is back. Trusty and Cameron Carter Vickers, my friends. Matt is with Norwich. Doing all right. He's been very consistent for us. John Brooks moved from Wolfsburg, where he was not playing, to Fulham, where he was not playing, but now he is playing, and he's in form, like his form, his, it said, his form deserved a call-up. I actually didn't really look at it. Yes. Oh, my. Got a red card. That's why you get a 5.5. But aside from that, has been playing quite well. And as a ball playing defender, he's at the 2014 World Cup. He's got the experience level head. He's not as good as I think some people in a U.S. soccer landscape would indicate. Like John Brooks. If John Brooks' plays were amazing. So maybe that's just football manager and we're several years in the future. Or a few years in the future, I should say. Um, CCV makes the cut. Um, really good mentals. I feel like solid player in a big environment, right? 15 determination. I like that. Um, Austin Trusty has been throughout. Now, he's not as sharp, so that's what I'm a little worried about with him. That's why he's not starting, but I think he's still a great player. Um, George Bellow is going to be our backup left back. It is what it is. We brought him in a couple times. He's not playing exceptionally well, but there's really, we really struggle with left backs. Um, so, <laughs> crush finger about Anthony Robinson. Uh, Weston McKinney, not really having a great time in the Bundesliga, 6.78, but he is starting. Um... Matsko here, 13 starts in the Spanish. Second division, two goals, two assists, but he's done well. He's at a 7.1 in two qualification games for us. And he, he's quite quite a gem, quite a gem. Um, obviously, Pulisic, 11 starts in the league, five starts in the Champions League, three goals. Exceptional player. Playing him as an inverted winger rather than inside forward like we have. Tim Weah is now with Burnley, my friend, so he's moved. He went from... PSG on loan, then, they, then uh, was it Lille? Yeah, Lille. Um, bought him for $9.5 million, sold him the next season, which I thought was odd, to into the Sur Turkish Super League, and then they sold him for a very tiny profit to Burnley. But he's getting starts, um, and he's an exceptional left winger, so he doesn't look too happy in that photo. Like, Tim, smile, brother. Uh, Josh Sargent, we are struggling at striker. Comes in. Four goals, three assists on a 7-0-9. So he's having a much better season than the Bundesliga. Like, he's still 22. 22 years old. But you're going like, wait a minute. Who's this Johnny guy? Yeah. Johnny playing for Int in the Brazilian second division has 22 total appearances, 15 goals. I don't care that it's the Brazilian second division. It's still the Brazilian second division, and he still has 15 goals. He is in form. And he's got, in the Copa Libertadores, eight total appearances, two goals on a 7-1-6. 
he pledged allegiance to the United States, okay? And so we've stolen him from Brazil. And, by the way, he's got four caps and three goals. He's done quite well. Now, that was in friendlies against subpar competition. But why him? Jordan Saibachu broke his foot and has j literally just come back. So I could have brought him, but he's not Matt Sharp. He's not played the in like for the last what what let's let's just not guess. Let's look. 3 months. I'm absolutely gutted for him because he has been like he committed to us. He was with us, but we <clears throat> because of how light we are at striker, I felt like we got Josh, Tim can back him up and Johnny as options. They're all young. So this may be a disaster, but with Jordan, it's like I didn't. Ha I don't have time to get him up to speed from a match sharpness standpoint, and he's not in form because he's had a broken foot. Who knows how that's going to impact him? I'm really gutted. I really am. Other mentions here: Keaton Parks and Nell had a. Um, he's not match sharp because he literally has just come back from a slipped disc for six weeks, lifting weights. Man, put the weights down. Um, so like literally, he didn't play in any of the friendlies leading up to the World Cup. We haven't had a chance to do that. It kind of is what it is. Tower Adams has dropped off a little bit. He's six starts, three subs on a 6-5-6 six, six in the Bundesliga. I think RB Leipzig is going to get red. He may go to France. Maybe. I don't know. I'm a little disappointed. Jack Harrison and Tyler Boyd. Tyler Boyd is on fire. 7.1. I know it's only one goal, three assists, and 12 starts. But he's got two Champions League appearances with an assist. His ratings are very good. It could be the rest of the squad. He's versatile. He can play on either side. He could play up top if we had to. And then Jack Harrison... Because of his versatility, really. 17 starts, two, two subs, two goals, two assists. Not exactly lighting it up with Stoke, but it's also Stoke. Um, so, yeah, that's how, this is how we line up, my friends. Um, to show you, we lost to Australia, which was absolutely devastating because they are like at 44th. We looked not great. They scored an early goal. We could do nothing about it. Then Ecuador, we had, a, we had West of Canada get sent off for a garbage call. In the 16th minute, and they were playing. This is the first time I've ever seen this in football manager. Ecuador was playing a 4-2-3-1, but with two DMs, one midfielder, two wingers, and an attacking midfield center. They went strikerless. What is that? That's amazing. But we were able to. I mean, it's not like they're the best competition. 61st in the world, right? But, like, we were down a man for mm, 75 minutes. You would think they could do something about that. But we come back with score. Tim Weah netted a wonderful goal. Pulisic with a brace. And Johnny getting a, a... I think that was his first goal with the U.S. Because he had just recently committed to us. And then leading up to... I canceled the friendlies. Slash, the reason these are here is some of our friendlies got canceled. Like the ones against England got canceled. Because they had a game against like Northern Ireland. I'm sure it's like the Nations League or I don't know. Whatever it was. And then we got Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates. Because I wanted us in the Middle East. In the heat playing now they're not the best competition but you're trying to build like positive vibes right so a 2-0 win with a penalty we'll take it anthony robinson with another great goal i'm not it, it wasn't like none of these goals are like so outstanding that i felt like i had to show you and then against the uae they scored a goal but we scored in the eighth minute johnny getting his brace his second and third goal for us keaton parks tyler boyd everyone played exceptionally well we're getting acclimated I had Ar well, I thought it was funny. Argentina kept coming back saying, you want to play in a, game, a game on the 17th in Argentina? And I'm like, we're not going to fly <laughs> to the Middle East and then fly back to Argentina for the 17th to fly back to the Middle East for a game on the 21st. Sorry. And they like kept asking. It's like, mate, stop. Like, I'm just going to play the two friendlies. Hopefully that's enough to get us match sharp. As you can tell, we're mostly match sharp. We do have some issues here with the rotational players. Hello, my friends. This is Editor GHD chiming in. I had some issues with some footage here, so we're going to actually cut this episode here, just introducing the squad that we brought with us and why, and then next episode we will take on Russia. Thanks for watching.